The debate around how good or bad video games are for us has been going on for years. Ever since games like Pong and Tetris, some people have claimed that video games are bad for us. But fear not, gamers. It turns out that playing them is really no different than going to the gym. It's just a workout for your mind instead of your muscles. Games just seem like fun, but they also increase gray matter. The gray matter in your brain is the part of your central nervous system and essentially controls all your brain's function. These include regions of the brain involved in muscle control and sensory perception, such as memory, hearing, seeing, emotions, speech, decision-making, and self-control. Basically, all the most important things. It makes sense to keep this part of the brain healthy because it will lead to faster thought processes and improvements in general well-being and quality of life. At the University of Rochester in New York, researchers found that playing video games increased the player's sensitivity to things going on around them. Playing action games compared to slower games increased the performance in visualization tests by 25%. This benefit doesn't just make them better at playing video games. It improves a wide variety of general skills that can help with everyday life, like driving or finding your friends in a crowd. This in no way means that you get to sit in front of your console or PC and play for hours or days on end to get smarter. It just means that those who still like to immerse themselves in a game or fantasy world no longer need to feel guilty about sitting back and playing. If setting goals in life seems tough, it might be time to look at video games for this very reason. People who've played video games know how to track their own growth because everything is measured in the game. You'll have experience points, levels, goals, and objectives. All of this information needs processing, so it teaches us to track progress and form our own goals. In a lot of games, there are daily quests. If you miss a day, you don't get those rewards. This makes gamers integrate these tasks into their daily lives. Some of the very best gamers create a structure of small habits or routines they perform each day that build over time. The satisfaction of getting that new skin you're after can lead to pushing through all the boring bits to get to that prize. There might have been a time when you would draw in the phone book while talking to your friends on the phone for hours, just looking for something to do. Although people might be more physically isolated now, games allow them to still have engaging experiences with their friends and family. They're spending as much time with their friends, but getting much more out of it. In this case, the headset is key. Online gaming allows people to engage with so many people from all over the world, all over one particular game they enjoy. You'll likely hear all kinds of people in all sorts of languages, which helps to build communication skills. This is particularly true for people with difficulty spending time with others in person, like friends who live on the other side of the country or even in a different one. This unconventional method of communication helps to build the skills and confidence necessary to interact with people in real time. This might save you if you're feeling shy or don't know how to start a conversation face-to-face. If enhancing your memory is important to you, then video games should be at the top of your list. You're required to listen to instructions, which might only be provided at the beginning, and remember them throughout the entire game. Mastering the keys on your keyboard or buttons on a controller helps you easily move your characters and objects in a game, to the point where it just becomes muscle memory. This helps improve your memory and dexterity. Learning something while playing video games might make you groan. We often just want to drive that car, build that house, or go into that battle as fast as possible. But there's a good chance you'll pick up a few things along the way. No, not the stats on that orc on level 17, and it's a weakness to fire potions. Early on, developers realized that video games could be used for much more than improving reading or math skills for people. Today, some games incorporate cooking, economics, world history, politics, science, literature, architecture, and other topics you may not have easy access to. Many use actual historical events to drive their stories. With so much that's happened in the world, it makes sense to use those ideas too. History can come alive to a player participating in the game. These can spark an interest in learning more about specific periods of time, historical figures, and the universe itself. Start playing a game with dinosaurs, and before you know it, you'll be learning all about them on the internet. 
Action games are very fast-paced. The character might be running and dodging attacks coming from all angles while glancing at a map to make sure they're going the right way. With peripheral images and events popping up and disappearing all the time, it's not as easy as it sounds. All these factors need to be taken into account, and that's why playing more of the same game helps with the brain's reaction time with our fingers and hands. Those repetitive actions and thoughts stimulate connections between brain cells, creating neural pathways between different parts of your brain. The more you practice a particular activity, the stronger that neural pathway becomes. That's the structural basis of learning. Doing anything repetitively physically changes the brain. With time and effort, you get better at the specific task you're practicing, whether it's evading and building in a video game or hitting a baseball out of the park. Physical activity and gaming aren't things that usually work together, unless you can jog on the spot while hunting monsters. With the future of virtual reality, though, games might be able to make us more fit than the gym. Most major consoles now have the technology to get people moving and on their feet. There are now mobile games that can be played in the real world. They can help to create experiences that get you exploring your town or city, meeting up with friends, or searching for hidden treasures in secret spots. Using video games to explore your neighborhood or city is a great excuse to get out of the house for a few hours. Where will games take us next? Every person who has ever existed has one thing in common – aging. While getting older and wiser has its benefits, there's also a good number of reasons it isn't so fun. Just like maintaining a healthy exercise routine is good for you, our brain can also be kept in shape. Crosswords, board games, and even Sudoku are all brain-stimulating exercises. But video games just take our brain to the next level. While opening up new pathways of thought in your brain, the developers have ways no one would have ever thought possible to keep our brain sharp and adapting. Pretty much any task that requires thinking will help you exercise and sharpen your mind, and that includes video games. Don't sit too close to that TV or you'll get square eyes. Remember that old saying? Well, it's not great to sit close. Games can actually help improve your eyesight. Video gamers have better than average eyesight. Who would have thought staring at a screen can make you see better? A study performed by researchers from McMaster University found that playing video games could help improve eyesight. Games teach the brain to spot small details, follow movements, and spotlight changes. After training for over 40 hours in a month, most patients showed improvement in one or both eyes after playing an action video game. When someone asks why you're still playing that game, just tell them you're improving your eyesight. In multiplayer video games, players often have to team up with other players. Some games even need a designated leader. It's up to that team leader to communicate with other players, develop strategies, identify the team's strengths and weaknesses, and keep everyone focused on the goal. Players have to deal with immediate problems while keeping long-term goals at the front of their minds. These skills become finely tuned over time and adapting to multiple teams in different gaming environments and scenarios. In business, these are the same leadership skills that supervisors, managers, and CEOs have to have. Whether you're the leader or just a team member, you're gaining experience that can be applied to the real world of work. No one likes to hear that crushing failure moment, noting that all your effort is now gone. You might have to deal with starting the level again, losing all your points, trying to remember where you dropped your loot, and if you can even get back to it. Though it may not be a real-life danger, playing a video game raises the stakes by putting your character and all your progress on the line. Gamers quickly learn how to navigate the world they're in and get used to tackling the unknown. With video games, you either win or keep trying, learning from your mistakes as you progress until you reach the end goal. Because of this, video games can teach people to be more confident and to work towards their goals, treating each misstep as just another learning opportunity. Simple and easy-to-access video games can easily make you happier, cause relaxation, and even keep away the blues. Heck, everyone deserves to take a little time off for themselves. Video games give you a feeling of well-being, which is a human psychological need. Hey, don't feel guilty for enjoying yourself. 
With so many simple games to choose from, just jump on for a short time and significantly improve your mood. Start looking for a game that you can really enjoy and, most of all, have fun. Charging your phone when going to bed is one of the biggest mistakes to make that will damage your battery in the long run. A battery's task is to power up your phone or laptop until it depletes, so it's best to let it do its job. Ideally, you should keep the battery between 20% and 80% to increase its lifetime. You shouldn't let your phone reach 0% either, because it also drains the overall battery life expectancy. It's fine to leave your phone plugged in every now and then, but it's a huge mistake to charge your device under the sun. It'll take longer to top up and will absorb the heat faster, causing it to shut down under extreme pressure. Batteries often tend to overheat, so keeping them under the sun is like leaving a batch of cookies in the oven for too long. Speaking of cookies, you probably heard they're useless and bad for your phone. Put that pack back! I'm not talking about those cookies here. I mean that pop-up notification that comes up and lets you accept cookies for the website preferences. Those cookies are basically meant for saving some basic information, so that you don't have to go through the tedious effort of selecting the preferred language, adding your email and password, or other simple things that let you use the website with ease. Having an overloaded number of saved cookies and cache can slow down the internet speed in your browser, causing it to crash at times, or even halt you from accessing certain parts of the website. So, every now and then, it's good to clear them out so that your browser and device can run smoothly. Avoid downloading apps from sketchy sources, even if the app has a flashy sign that says free. Those apps carry viruses or malware that can harm your phone and ruin your data. The best you can do is avoid unofficial app stores and stick to those with reputable reviews and ratings. If you succumb to such apps, at least download some antivirus software to defend yourself and alleviate the risk of damage. Just because your phone is water resistant doesn't mean you should take it swimming with you often. Yep, you better leave it on some firm soil when you go swimming. Water resistant simply means that if water accidentally spills on it, you won't have to worry about any heavy damages. 5 to 30 minutes of water exposure is fine, but still risky. And more importantly, don't dip your phone in water frequently, even if it's for a short amount of time. The long-term exposure will damage the hardware, which will cost you a lot of money to repair. Cleaning your computer screen is always a good habit, but have you ever cleaned it on the inside? Nope, you shouldn't dismantle your computer for no reason or remove any hardware pieces. But dust can collect inside and damage your hardware. So, get a clean, dry towel, preferably a microfiber one, and wipe away the dust. Make sure to clean the fan and get the inside corners that can store pockets of dust and debris. You'll be surprised to find tiny hairs, crumbs, and other dirt inside your computer. Don't use regular cleaning products for wiping surfaces to clean your laptops or phones from the inside. The chemicals inside can cause permanent damage. Rule of thumb, always get protective cases for your phones. Some of them will come with a hardcover case upon purchasing it. But if not, then get one. It will pay off if you ever drop your phone. The case will save your screen and you'll no longer get those annoying scratches that seem to pop up out of nowhere. Whatever you do, at all costs, don't stick any metallic objects in your charging ports. Paper clips, pins, and wires aren't meant for cleaning them. A metallic object can damage the hardware inside the charging port. Little holes like charging ports can store a decent amount of dust and other little things that can ruin your phone. Use a wooden object like a toothpick to clean around the edges. Make sure to be gentle, otherwise you can break some sensitive objects inside. Don't try to remove dust using your own breath. Water particles can even be more devastating than metallic objects. Don't carry your laptop by its screen, even if it's just a short distance. The body's there for a reason. It can handle the pressure of being lifted and placed on any surface. The screen is thin and sensitive and has delicate hinges that aren't built for withstanding the type of pressure like being carried. The ideal way to carry a laptop is by holding it with two hands and placing it on a smooth and flat surface. When connecting to public Wi-Fi hotspots, always make sure that the connection is legit. Imagine this, 
You're sitting in your favorite coffee shop with a lot of work on your hands and find out that there are two independent Wi-Fi networks. You choose one of them and get to the landing page where they want you to enter your email, password, and other personal information. Weird! The landing page is almost identical to the page you usually open, but you notice some things are quite off. First, there are some common typos in the sign-in page. Next, the logo of the coffee shop is pixelated. This is a mock-up site that bad people use to steal your data. Since they are in control of the site, they see your email and password on their end and can now have access to your bank account and other sensitive information. Some mock-up sites are flawless, so it's good to be on your guard the next time you use a public Wi-Fi spot. When something breaks, it's best to get it repaired at an authorized dealer. They're trained for fixing specific devices and can guarantee to bring in certain spare parts from the company. Unauthorized repair shops might damage your device, especially if it's a unique item that can only be fixed at an authorized center. Be cautious when choosing a place to fix your gadgets. So, you finally get that phone with plenty of storage you've been dreaming about. But hey, don't get carried away by installing a bunch of apps and programs or keeping thousands of pictures and videos that are likely to collect dust. Make sure you know what you're downloading and saving on your device. You can go to settings and clean up the extra stuff in there. If it doesn't do the job, there's third-party software that allows you to clean up any unused programs or files without you feeling too attached to them. It's hard to resist deleting things thinking, hey, I'm gonna need that in the future. It's all about self-control. However, if you do, in fact, need some of that stuff and don't have the heart to delete it, try storing them in external hard drives. You can buy some that have multiple terabytes of storage and keep them somewhere safe and damage-free. Another solution is storing your videos and pictures in cloud servers to access them whenever you want. So, you're busy working and don't have time to save your files in their designated folders. You just drop them all over your desktop and after a couple of days, you notice that your laptop has slowed down significantly. A cluttered desktop can actually slow down your laptop since it's the main interface that's consuming all the RAM. Find some time to organize your files to keep your desktop clean and fast. The dark mode isn't just cool because it changes the interface of your apps and device, it's healthy too. If you're one of those people whose eyes are mostly glued to your phone screen, a dark interface can reduce the strain on your eyes and keep them more comfortable. Popular apps utilize dark mode while maintaining the same functions and user experience. Another advantage of the dark mode is that you can save a good amount of battery. If your phone has an OLED or AMOLED screen, all the dark pixels that aren't illuminated don't consume battery. So, if you're watching a video, everything dark or black aren't active pixels, which means that your phone isn't using battery to power that part of the screen. If most of your apps and phone interface are in dark mode, you'll definitely save some battery life. You can probably save without a glamorous animated lock screen and home screen for the sake of battery. Keep them both plain black. Most of the time, you're navigating through the home screen to get to your apps. And it'll definitely be easier and faster with a plain dark background. On October 30th, 1759, the inhabitants of the Middle East were jolted awake by an earthquake. Cracks appeared in the walls of their homes. Roofs began to crumble. People ran out of their homes and gathered in open areas. But because of strong shocks, they kept losing their footing and falling. A month later, there was another earthquake, but it turned out to be even stronger. Trees broke, houses collapsed, Deep cracks appeared in the ground. The disaster lasted for two minutes. Oases, roads, and cities were destroyed. Incredibly, Baalbek's ancient buildings withstood earthquakes. Some historians state that this majestic and mysterious place was built during the Roman Empire, but many researchers disagree. Whatever the truth is, the city is one of the main archaeological phenomena of humankind. The most amazing building of Baalbek is the Temple of Jupiter. The inhabitants of the Roman Empire believed that Jupiter held power over lightning and thunder. The building looked like a platform with 54 columns. A massive roof rested on these columns. Today, you can only see six 70-foot-high columns. 
Each of them consists of three sections and resembles a pencil. The cores of these pencils were made of lead. This made the columns exceptionally strong. Each of these pieces of stone weighed an incredible 80 tons. That's the weight of 35 Ford Explorer SUVs. Look, this is the largest block in the Great Pyramid of Giza. But compared to the blocks from Baalbek, it doesn't even look that impressive. The foundation under the Temple of Jupiter was preserved. That's how specialists figured out it consisted of about 25 monolithic stones, weighing 450 tons each. It means that the blocks from Baalbek weigh almost four times more than the blocks from Egypt. There are three more enormous limestone blocks in the foundation. They weigh 800 tons each. This is more than twice the weight of a Boeing 747 plane. Ancient builders must have had a hard time carving such giants from a piece of stone. And after that, they also had to pull them to the construction site and lift them to a significant height. Repeating these logistics would probably turn out to be a nightmare for present-day builders. To do this amount of work, they would need modern equipment. But Baldex constructors didn't have trucks, cranes with circular saws, or electricity. How did the builders of the past manage to do this? Scientists have a theory that includes ropes, winches, and lever systems. Naturally, the engineers of the past made all the gadgets from wood. Around 3,000 feet away from the ruins of the temple complex, there's a quarry. Archaeologists suppose that's where the stones for the construction were cut. They found a block of limestone there. It seemed to be too large, even for this incredible place. The monolith got called the Stone of the South. It was 65 feet long and 13 feet wide. The ancient builders didn't have time to completely separate it from its mother rock. A group of scientists from Austria estimated that this piece of limestone weighed more than 1,000 tons. That's like three Boeing aircraft or 160 African elephants. There was another surprise awaiting the archaeologists near the Stone of the South. It was the second monolith that weighed more than 1,200 tons. But the ancient builders didn't stop at that. They continued to work. In 2014, in the same quarry, German archaeologists unearthed a block that weighed 1,650 tons. No one has figured out yet why people of the past needed a piece of stone that weighed as much as 125 school buses. It's also unclear how they were going to move this giant and why they didn't finish the job. In any case, this third monolith is the largest processed piece of stone in human history. There are more questions than answers. Some researchers believe that people of the past had high-tech equipment. Others don't think so, but are eager to understand how the builders managed to move those stones. There's a huge number of ancient buildings and artifacts on the planet. Lots of them make researchers scratch their heads. Near the Pyramid of Djoser in Egypt, archaeologists have found a network of tunnels. This place is called Serapium. It contains 24 sarcophagi, weighing from 70 to 100 tons. The giant boxes are carved from a single piece of granite and covered with heavy lids. The sarcophagi are perfectly symmetrical. To the touch, their walls are as smooth as glass. Even with the current level of technology, this is very difficult to do. But the ancient Egyptians managed this feat. The Lycurgus Cup is a priceless artifact and example of ancient nanotechnology. It's made of glass that can change its color. If you put a source of light in front of the cup, it turns green. If the light is behind the goblet, it becomes deep red. In this case, the figure of Greek King Lycurgus turns pale purple. Scientists understood how this color change worked only at the end of the 20th century. Through microscopes, they saw nanoparticles of silver, gold, and copper. They had been added to the glass matrix. Thanks to this, you can observe a color change called dichroism. Interestingly, the gold and silver were grounded into a fine dust. It's almost impossible to do this by accident. Most likely, the ancient experts knew for sure what they were doing. Bolivia has a curious place called Puma Punku. It looks as if an ancient giant played there with an enormous construction set. And after the game, they forgot to put the pieces back into the box. But there are no giants, and the huge stone blocks were carved by ancient builders over 1,500 years ago. Some of the rocks weigh 100 tons. The blocks were brought to an altitude of almost 13,000 feet above sea level from the quarry 60 miles away from the construction site. There's no forest in that area. This means the builders couldn't use trees to make wooden rollers. The monument belongs to the Inca civilization. Scientists are sure they didn't know anything about wheels. 
1992, the inhabitants of a Chinese village decided to drain a pond. Their ancestors had been using it to wash clothes and catch fish for hundreds of years. They kept pumping the water out for 17 days. At the bottom of the reservoir, they made an unexpected discovery. The villagers saw an entrance to a cave going down to a depth of 100 feet. The incredible find was named the Long Yu Caves. Unknown builders carved out 320,000 square feet of galleries. There are separate rooms, bridges, pools, and columns that support the ceiling. The walls of the cave are covered with strange carved lines and patterns. Scientists haven't found any information about who built the caves and why they did it. The construction technology also remains a mystery. Antonio Stradivari lived in Italy in the 18th century. He created musical instruments. More than 600 of his works have survived to this day. 500 of them are violins. One of the instruments was sold at auction for $16 million. The violins made by this master sound clear and deep. Researchers can't understand why Stradivarius instruments produce such unique sounds. Perhaps it's all about the varnish the master used to cover the violins. The answer may also lie in the wood the instruments are made of. In those days, Europe had a cold climate. Because of this, the wood became denser, and the instruments made of it sounded especially pleasing to the ear. In the Indian city of Delhi, there's a 23-foot-high pole. It weighs 6.5 tons and is made of 98% wrought iron. The 1,600-year-old pillar has no signs of rust or decay. Scientists believe that the monument is so well-preserved thanks to the dry weather and the chemical composition of the metal. It might be resistant to corrosion. And still, researchers don't know how the blacksmiths managed to make an iron pillar that's not afraid of rust. It seems like a tough feat, even for modern metallurgists. The Al Nasla rock is divided into two parts by a perfectly straight slit. Each boulder stands on a small pedestal. Some people believe this is the evidence of ancient laser technology. But geologists think the split happened due to the ground shifting or natural vibrations that occurred under the rock. This process led to the appearance of the crack. It had been deepening for thousands of years, and gradually, the natural monument took the form you can see today. There's a pretty cool innovation coming in the world of headphones in 2022. Ta-da, the invisible headphone. Yep, you heard it right. This gadget transmits ultrasound silently through the air. You'll feel like you're wearing a pair of real headphones because while transferring ultrasound, they converge it into audible pockets just outside of your ears. If there are people around you in the same room, they'll only be able to hear something like a whisper of sound. If you're the one wearing the invisible headphones, you'll immerse in three-dimensional spatial audio that gets reduced up to 90% only three feet away from you. If you turn your head or move, it'll activate motion sensors in charge of facial recognition. They track your ears to make sure the sound gets to the right spot. When they first appeared, headphones actually had a single earpiece only. In the 1880s, telephone operators used some sort of simplified version of what we know as headphones today. They had to connect it together to a contraption with a mouthpiece that allowed transmission. That contraption itself weighed from 6 to 11 pounds, and an operator would hold it on their shoulder. Inventors never really intended for headphones to be portable, or at least not from the start. In the 1970s, people mostly used headphones to listen to records at home. The big change in headphone history happened only when Sony released the Walkman. People wanted portable headphones to listen to their favorite song even outside of their homes. If you noticed one earbud gets discharged faster than the other, know that you're not the only one dealing with this. It happens because the signal won't be equally strong in both of your earbuds. For instance, if the difference goes up to 15 to 20% after you used both of them for the same amount of time, yeah, something can be wrong. But if the difference is 5%, that's normal because the system rounds out battery data from each of your earbuds. So it depends on where exactly you hold your phone. It could be closer to the left or the right earbud, or how conductive one side of your head is. In a way, it blocks less signal. And generally, your earbuds have individual connections, so each will use energy on a slightly different level. If you use airplane mode while playing mobile games, you won't get ads popping up all the time in the middle of the game. Smart idea! When you turn off the sound on your smartphone, your battery will last longer. 
the vibration will also waste energy. You'll be able to charge your phone quicker if you use an outlet rather than a USB cable. Sure, it's great if you're in a car or somewhere outside with your laptop available, but you'll definitely have to wait longer. Enter pound, 31 pound, and your phone number if you want to hide it. That way, when you're calling a friend, they won't be able to see who's calling. This way, you'll be able to hide your number only during the current call. When you want to hand your phone to a friend, but at the same time keep all of your messages and the rest of your personal data confidential, go with guest mode. Use two fingers to swipe down from the top and go to the user icon on the upper right. You'll see the add guest icon. Now you can choose which actions you'll allow performing to your friend or anyone who has your smartphone. Smartphones are so versatile, they'll slowly replace many things at your home. You can even use your phone instead of a TV remote. There are apps that allow you to connect the TV through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Do you ever have to read articles on Wikipedia on a really complicated topic, like how your phone or some other gadgets function? You can translate them into regular human language by choosing the simple English version. This will get you to an article that's much easier to read and understand. Your smartphone can see infrared light, so if you're about to shoot an infrared beam directly into your phone's camera, there will be a purple beam on your display. This happens because most sensors on digital cameras can sense light frequencies our eyes aren't able to pick up. Wireless chargers are convenient to carry around. Plus, admit it, they look cool. But if your battery is low and you need your phone charged as soon as possible, they aren't as effective and fast as conventional ones. If you have some spare batteries at home, you can use the negative side of the battery as a stylus for your smartphone, be it iPhone or Android. Yep, try scrolling through the apps, navigating through the homepage, drawing in notes. A battery stylus can do pretty much anything that its regular version is capable of. You can also take a pencil and grab some foil lying around. Tear up a small piece of foil to wrap it around the eraser at the top of your pencil. And here it is, you have a new stylus once again. It can be useful when it's really cold outside and you're wearing gloves and can't control your phone without a stylus. The iPad came to the market years after the iPhone had already set the world on fire. But the tablet was the original project the company was working on before the idea of applying such a system to a phone. When you want to edit your home screen, you'll probably grab an app icon and move it wherever you want, right? Then you'll grab another app and move it over, and another one, and so on. It's way more effective to just grab an app and then tap on the rest of the apps you want to move. Then you move it, place it where you want it to be, and everything's done. Even Face ID can't guarantee no one will unlock your phone without your permission. There may be a situation when someone takes away your phone and tries to unlock your Face ID by using your face. If that happens, just say, Hey Siri, whose phone is this? Your phone is going to immediately freeze up, so a person holding it will have to use the password to unlock it. If you'd like your iPhone to be a bit louder, go to Settings, then Music. Under EQ, you'll see the option called Late Night. This will make loud sounds quiet, and at the same time, amplify quiet sounds so your phone will have much better sound. If you have AirPods and you lost one, you can track it down with Apple's Find My App. First, you need to make sure your AirPods are linked to your Apple ID. You need to set up the Find My App on your iPhone, and then you'll be able to check the last location of your beloved AirPods on a map. If you lose just one, you can prompt it to play a sound. That way, you can easily find it, at least as long as it's connected to your Bluetooth and is close to some other Apple devices of yours. Simply launch the Find My app, go to the Devices tab, and press the Play Sound option. To save battery life, keep just one bud in and swap them from time to time. If you're using AirPods a lot and your battery often runs low, you'll be able to charge one of them while you're using another. You can use your iPhone to check the status of the battery for both your AirPods and their charging case. The first way is to open the charging case next to your iPhone. It will prompt the phone to display a pop-up where you'll see the remaining battery. Another way is to add the battery widget to the Notification Center's Today panel. 
This widget will include AirPods only when you're actively using them. Or you can check the remaining battery on your Apple Watch. Place your open charging case next to the watch. Now, open Control Center and choose the battery option. You'll see battery stats for your watch, AirPods, and the case. Siri can actually read some of your latest messages for you. It can do it through your AirPods. You can also use a quick voice command to reply to your messages. You don't have to do anything particular to set up such a feature. But if you want to turn it off, go to Settings, click on Siri and Search, and then on Announce Messages. Besides messages, Siri can also announce notifications through your AirPods. Decades ago, no one would ever imagine keeping a stick in their pocket that could hold hundreds of gigabytes. We've come a long way since then and got used to USBs transferring our files from device to device with ease. In 2000, two major companies developed and sold the first USB flash drives 1.0, which snowballed into USB 2.0, 3.0, Type-C, and so on. Physically, they can endure rough treatment and won't get damaged easily, especially if you get proper protection. By design, USBs are almost perfect. So perfect that you always make the mistake of inserting it in the wrong way. Admit it, the two square holes are used to help the USB secure its position once it's inside the port. It's not strong enough to keep it stuck, but strong enough to do its job. You can protect your USB with proper encryption. This means that if anyone gets their hands on them, they won't be able to read them. Encrypted files end up being scrambled into gibberish of a series of letters and numbers instead of comprehensive words to anyone who tries to read it. The file is only accessible if someone gets their hands on that USB. But if you're using certain online services like messaging or emailing, then encryption is simply not enough. Sure, the person on the other end can't read the contents of the work, but the hosting website can. This is where end-to-end -end encryption comes in. That means any information that goes in and out is, again, scrambled into gibberish to anyone who is in the way of your traffic, including the hosting service. Cloud storage has taken the world by storm. You can now save everything that's on your desktop to the internet and access that data across multiple devices. All you need is an email and password and boom, you're safe and have all your files in one place. Cloud storage isn't data floating up in the clouds, but, less excitingly, servers that physically store data. They're like regular computers, just minus the monitors for viewing. These servers take up a lot of money. That's why you normally have to pay for their services. The servers are placed in data centers all around the world where third-party companies manage them. It's like getting remote access to a computer. The servers include a master control server, backup server, and a linked supply of servers operating to maintain a good quality service. The more money you pay, the better the server your data will be stored in. In the realm of computers, you just can't delete something to be gone forever. Whatever file you want to remove is already present in the hard disk as electrical impulses. And, depending on your gadget, it will be disposed of in a recycle bin or the garbage. That isn't to say that it isn't still there. It simply implies that the file has been moved to a different folder from which you can easily recover it. So, if you're worried about accidentally deleting a crucial document you've been working on for weeks, don't panic. It's not gone for good. But if your device breaks, then all your data is lost. If you own a device that has Windows 10, then you've probably been shutting down thinking that your computer or laptop is completely off. This is not the case. Windows 10 doesn't actually shut down, but goes into a state of hibernation. It keeps your app saved for you to recover. The proper way to shut it down is by resetting it. Windows operating system is known for being user-friendly with all the commands displayed in front of you. But for computer whiz kids, know that you can open the search bar and type CMD for the command prompt. It looks just like a bunch of random characters, but this is where you can achieve a lot with your device. If you don't like the black window, you can always change the color of your suiting. Once you launch the command prompt window, right-click on the title bar and then on Properties. Another window will open which has the option of choosing colors. You can pick the colors you want for the background and text 
or fix the opacity for the CMD window. This is easy mode. The real work is typing commands in the window. If you want to look for all your drivers on your Windows 10 device, then type in this command in the window. Don't forget to add spaces. The list of servers will magically pop up on your screen. This is a good way to get to the bottom of your issue, instead of searching for them manually. You can also hide specific folders on your computer through the command prompt by typing this command and pressing enter. Of course, you'll have to type in the folder you want to hide, and poof, it's gone. The non-tech way of doing this is by opening the properties pane in the folder and clicking on the checkbox that shows hidden. While this is indeed the easy way of hiding your folders, it's not the most effective. You can simply write show hidden files and folders, and every checkbox you check will be visible again. The command prompt isn't all about business. You can try playing a game there to pass the time. Don't expect a AAA kind with realistic graphics and epic gameplay. Type this command and you'll be transported into the game via text. This game will allow you to create characters and engage in this imaginary world. Google Chrome is one of the most popular browsers on the net, but you can also play a text-based game there, just like in the command prompt. First press Ctrl plus Shift plus J to open the console. Then type Text Adventure into the search box. Don't freak out, you just open the sort of a back end of the page. Next, click on the box that says Console. You'll be greeted with a text that will ask you if you want to play a game. Type Yes and you'll instantly begin. They'll give you some basic commands which are easy to follow and an opening premise of the journey. If you're looking for something a little more contemporary, then get ready to play some solitaire. No worries, you don't have to type some command to play it. All you need to do is type solitaire in the search bar, and you're there. You can play the exciting game of solitaire in your web browser. And when you get bored, you can play the classic game Pac-Man. If you're from the generation of the classic bulky phones, then this next game will bring back all those memories of your childhood. Open Google and type snake, and there you go. When the internet is down, you can play the dinosaur game in your browser window while you're impatiently waiting for the Wi-Fi to come back. This game is very simple. After pressing enter, you just have to hit the space bar to jump over obstacles. And at a certain point, you'll have the option to duck down, which will make it even more challenging. Even without Wi-Fi, you can still have a good time. You can pause the game whenever you want by pressing the Alt key or F11. You can just click on your screen to continue the game at any time. Windows 11 has some cool hidden features that are very useful, like adjusting the volume for each individual app. You can go to Settings and click on System. Hit the Sound section. This will bring you to all the sound levels and the master switch. Copy-pasting is so essential to our everyday workflow that Windows 11 decided to take it to a whole other level with clipboard history. This option allows you to save your copied texts in one designated area, which you can access anytime. And the good news is that this option is also available on Windows 10. Just click on the Windows key plus V and you're good to go. If you have too many windows opened on Windows 11, you can grab the window that you want to keep and shake it. It will minimize all the remaining windows. It's also here to make our lives easier. And these inventions are proof of that. So buckle up as I teleport you to the near future and show you what one day will look like. You get out of your bed and head to the kitchen for breakfast or to your smart fridge to be more precise. The world's biggest tech and appliance companies have been working on developing fridges with some mind-blowing features for quite some time now. These can scan the contents stored inside of them, keeping track of what items you're running low on. Their built-in touchscreens will display lots of information for you, from your daily schedule to a slideshow of family photos. Just like any other wireless device you have, you'll be able to connect them to your home's Wi-Fi. Once they are connected to the internet, they can interact with other connected devices in your home. So, you'll even be able to move the show that you were watching in the living room to the touchscreen of your smart fridge and not miss that big twist. 
This screen will also let you know when and what items you need to reorder, as well as recommend recipes based on the ingredients you already have inside the fridge. The system behind these new and improved fridges will rely on the barcode or the radio frequency identification tags your food packaging will have. These are actually already being used by food manufacturers to manage stock and shipping. By scanning the tags or the barcodes, your fridge can access details such as expiration dates to keep an accurate inventory of your food. And just in case you're wondering how much having a fridge that sends you a shopping list will cost you, it'll range somewhere between $2,000 and $5,000. Your smart fridge warns that the coffee cream is expired. Oops, guess it's time to head to the store. Now, don't worry about searching for your wallet, though. You will need neither cash nor a credit card to buy stuff. This will be possible all thanks to the tiny microchips which can be implanted into your hand. Don't get too excited, though. One chip won't turn you into a cool cyborg or anything. This chip technology actually already exists in digital house keys, e-tickets, and bank cards. What will make them different now is that once the implantation process is complete, they will get linked to all of your online accounts. This will allow you to open your front door, hop onto the public bus or train, and buy groceries all with a flick of a wrist. You come home and finally have your morning coffee uh, with cream. Now it's time to actually make yourself something to eat. Ah, such a bore. Or maybe not, thanks to your cyber chef. In 2015, a robotics company shook the culinary world when they presented their new invention, a robot that uses giant hands to cook meals. This master chef comes pre-programmed with thousands of recipes from world-class human chefs, so you won't need to Google how to make the perfect pie crust anymore. The robot that's named Moly will do everything from pour to stir, but unfortunately, it can't prepare ingredients for the recipes it's going to make. At least, not yet. Maybe I've seen too many movies, but it's probably not such a great idea to give a robot a knife anyway, right? However, if you prepare the ingredients yourself and put them inside special containers, it will recognize the ones it's supposed to use. Once it's done preparing food, it will clean up surfaces too. Ah, finally, your own bus boy. Molly can plan and adapt its recipes according to your diet preferences and calorie intake limits. However, you can also add your own recipes to its list through the touchscreen, and it can recreate your grandma's casserole with 100% accuracy for you. But you know what? I bet you can hire a personal chef for yourself and the amount you will pay to get molly, which is $340,000. And the best part is, they can even prepare the ingredients for you. Now, as the clock strikes noon, you'll receive a text message from your mom. She reminds you about her visit, which will be in an hour. Uh-oh, you totally forgot about that. Well, you take a look around your house and realize that you haven't been doing any cleaning for quite some time. But she can't see it like this. This is where super suits might come in handy. The Guardian XO is a rechargeable, battery-powered, and mechanical full-body exoskeleton that's designed to make you faster and stronger. Using its electrical motors and a state-of-the-art set of 100 ultra-precise body sensors, it combines human intelligence, instinct, and judgment with the endurance and precision of machines. It can increase your strength and allow you to lift up to 200 pounds of weight like you're lifting a feather, and it won't restrict your movement at all. So you can clean under your sofa, bed, or that smart refrigerator pretty easily and quickly before your mom arrives. Talk about productivity. But don't get your hopes up too much. It doesn't have the technology to allow you to stop buses like Superman or jump over buildings like Neo. So it's not really suited to saving the world. But it sure can be a lifesaver if you're moving into a new house. What's great about it is that you can actually get your hands on it now. That is, if you have $100,000 per year to pay its rent. Wow, you finished cleaning so fast that you still got some time left before mommy comes home. Might as well go for a quick run. But thanks to your suit, you didn't burn that many calories while cleaning. So grab your futuristic sci-fi sneakers and let's head out. This creature-like footwear called the Cryptide Sneaker is a fully 3D printed shoe. It's made out of only one material, which is a special polymer called thermoplastic elastomer. 
This material varies in thickness or thinness in different places, meaning while specific parts of the sneaker become stiffer, the others will remain soft and flexible. So it is ergonomic and comfortable, in addition to being easy and fast to manufacture. The whole shoe can be printed out in one go, and it doesn't require any gluing or stitching. And the best part is, its shape can be adapted to your own foot. The only thing needed for that is your foot's 3D scan. Well, you head back home just in time to greet your mom. She wants the two of you to spend a nice, quiet afternoon together, reading or watching something. You think that's a great idea, and you show your new favorite book to her. She goes through the pages, but you notice she's having a hard time reading the words, squinting her eyes. If only I could zoom into the book pages like I can do with your Instagram photos, she says. Hey, you have just the thing she needs. In 2019, a team of researchers created a pair of contact lenses that zoom in when you blink twice. Each eye movement you make gives distinct electrical signals. The zoom-in contact lenses contain electrodes that can track these signals and respond accordingly. The polymers that they're made of expand when a certain electrical current is applied. So, when you blink twice, the lenses increase their magnification and make everything appear 32% larger for you. However, it looks like you'll have to wait a bit longer to start wearing them. The researchers are still trying to figure out how to make them out of the material regular contacts are made of, so they'll be safer for everyday use. Now, aside from the zoom-in only lenses, though, other researchers have been working on creating what they call smart lenses as well. These will have nearly invisible micro-LED displays smaller than a grain of sand tiny navigation sensors, image sensors, and almost microscopic batteries. They'll help guide you through new cities, give you information about the buildings and the people. Wow, traveling made easy. Aren't you glad you have that trust fund to pay for all this? Wait, no trust fund? Well, you can still have Instagram. A computer can overheat, buzz, and slow down since the internal parts are subjected to a heavy load. Turning it off helps reduce this load. You can also use sleep mode, but it all depends on the computer and the apps running on it. Some IT companies have computers that aren't turned off for several months, and it's okay. But let's see what would happen to a computer that works endlessly. It's the year 2356. Archaeologists have made a stunning discovery. Through the lenses of augmented reality, all people are watching an ancient artifact being excavated. Scientists managed to find a weak clot of energy deep under the ground. It seems that unknown source generates energy from the air. Excavations begin. In a couple of hours, archaeologists carefully take out a mysterious object. At first, they notice a flat screen that was created in the 21st century. Next, they find the system unit, covered with a thick layer of stone. Surprisingly, the CPU is still running inside this computer and its work has been going on for more than 330 years. 2021. You're looking for a job as a graphic designer and want to buy a powerful computer for little money. A new one is too expensive, especially with a good video card and RAM. So you decide to purchase a second-hand computer. You find an ad online. There's a cool, modern, and cheap device for sale. You arrive at an old antique shop. You see old typewriters, notebooks, and paintings in the windows. You don't believe you can buy a good computer here, so you look at beautiful sketchbooks. You're greeted by a very old seller with a long beard. He admits he has been waiting for you for a very long time and invites you to go into the room with a computer. Among some ancient-looking scrolls, an old pendulum clock, and other antique things, you notice a glow. It comes from the computer. It seems to be a thousand years old, but it still works. The seller launches one of the latest computer games with stunning graphics on it. The game works without lags or errors. You play for a few minutes, and then you buy the computer. The old man warns you that you need to take care of it and clean it regularly. As you're leaving the store, the seller looks happy and relieved. You come home, place the system unit under the table, connect the screen, keyboard, and the mouse, and notice the computer is turned on. It's strange, because you've unplugged it and carried it across the city. It doesn't matter, because you can play it now and work in the graphics editor. You were sitting at the computer until the morning and fell asleep right at the table. 
A few hours later, you wake up with a headache. The noise and the glow of the screen have disrupted your sleep. You go to bed, and as you wake up, you notice the computer is still turned on. The screen is lit. The game is paused. The computer has been working all this time. You open the start menu and look for the shutdown option, but you can't find it. Then you reach for the system unit to turn it off, but can't find the shutdown button either. You don't want to pull it out of its socket, because it can interfere with the stable work of the OS. For the next few weeks, your computer doesn't shut down at all. Then, it starts making a quiet noise. You understand that this is a signal that you need to clean all the internal parts. The heat radiates from it, and cooling fans are spinning inside. You copy all the data from the computer to the hard drive and pull the computer out of the socket. It's strange, but it keeps working. You forget about cleaning it and run back to the store. The building where you bought the computer is abandoned. It's only been a few weeks, but it looks like no one has lived in it for decades. You come home and clean your computer carefully. The noise disappears. The computer works stably. Now you're wondering where it gets its energy from. The next day, you get an electricity bill. It says you have a huge debt, so you realize the computer uses your electricity. Somehow, it connects remotely to your network. You keep using the computer. It works without rest for months. You've loaded many programs, and some of them are running 24-7. You even like it that the computer doesn't shut down. At any time, you can sit down and get started. You don't have to wait for the apps to load. When you're not at home, you can always connect to your computer via remote access. The necessary processes, such as antivirus scanning or OS updating, don't happen during your waking hours, but when you are asleep. But on the downside, it consumes too much power. You have to pay a lot every month. If something happens and the electricity rates go up, you won't be able to afford it. Constant work wears the hardware out. You try to clean your computer, but it's not enough. After a couple of years, you may feel a strong slowdown in some resource-intensive apps. The more the computer works, the more heat it releases. The higher the temperature, the worse it gets. The noise gets louder. It prevents you from falling asleep. A year passes. The computer's still working. It's so hot that you always have to keep the window open. The computer is buzzing, and this sound already gives you a headache. You can't turn it off, and cleaning the inside while it's working isn't as effective anymore. You already want to buy a new powerful laptop and get rid of this old one. Every day, the computer's production capacity gets worse and worse. You no longer clean it because you're too lazy. You live near the highway, and every time you open the window, a lot of dust flies in the room and gets clogged in the system unit. The computer doesn't just hum, but makes a sound similar to drilling. Of course, you can't sleep in such conditions. The system unit gets so hot that you can fry three eggs on its surface. You delete a lot of apps to let your computer relax a little. It works! It uses less power and doesn't hum that loudly. But still, you're going to get rid of it. Tomorrow, you'll throw the computer in the landfill. In the morning, your employer calls you and invites you to an interview in another city. In a few hours, you're on the plane. Your new job is so exciting that you forget about the computer. You rent an apartment in the new city and sell the old one along with all the furniture and the humming machine. 2356. Scientists have found out that all the details of the computer are faulty. Rust ate through the hull. All the microchips have been out of service for a long time. It's all covered with a thick layer of solidified dust and ground. Only the processor is somehow still active. The computer doesn't generate energy. It gets it remotely from the nearest city power plant. Further analysis has shown that over several centuries, the computer had used a million dollars worth of electricity. After the first few years of constant working, the graphics card and all the cooling fans went out of order. At this moment, the computer started making a loud hum, which frightened people who happened to be nearby every night. It was in a landfill for a long time. Rain and dampness caused metal corrosion. The computer was sinking deeper and deeper into the ground for 300 years. This disabled the operation of almost all of its details. The processor kept on running and warming up to high temperatures. Strong radiation deterred insects and bacteria that caused materials to rot. Well, 
Thanks to the intense heat, the ground around the computer began to harden and protect it from any external factors. Scientists conducted carbon analysis and found out the computer started working long before you bought it in the store. Many people tried to get rid of it one after another, but it continued to work. It's still a mystery who has created it and for what purpose. If you're noticing that your computer is getting slower as time goes by, try checking its temporary cache. On a Mac, you can do it by pressing Command plus Shift plus G on the home screen. This will open a command window that will offer you to go to a specific folder of your choice. From there, type in exactly this, tilde forward slash library forward slash caches. The tilde symbol stands for the home folder, just so you know. The window that opens will show you a lot of files and folders that were created by various apps in the past. Check the size of the folder that contains them. If it's less than one gigabyte, you can safely leave it be. It doesn't do any harm. But if it's three gigabytes or bigger, feel free to delete all the files there, or at least those that take up too much space. Files in the cache folder are basically useless as they only make some processes in specific apps run a bit faster. You don't need most of them, so safely remove them from your Mac. You'll notice your computer running faster altogether from now on. On a Windows PC, press Win plus S to open the search bar and then type percentage temp percentage in it. You'll see the temp folder where all the temporary app files will be contained. Again, check the size, and if it's too large, just clean it up. Another reason for your computer to take way too long to get going is that you might have too many programs running at startup. For Windows users, click Control plus Shift plus Escape to open the Task Manager. Then, go to the Startup tab and choose which programs you want to launch with your system. For Mac OS, go to System Preferences, click on Users and Groups, and select your user. After that, click on the Login Items tab. You can remove or hide startup applications from here. But before you start turning off all your startup programs, make sure you do your research first, because some processes might be needed by third-party programs you have installed. A useful key combination if the dock on your MacBook annoys you. Press Command plus Option plus D and the dock panel will disappear. Click again and the panel will reappear. A quick and easy way to draw the Apple logo in any text editor. Press the Option plus Shift plus K keys and the company icon will appear. It only works on an English keyboard layout. On Windows and Mac OS, you may turn on the typing dictation function. On Mac, System Preferences, Keyboard, and Dictation. On Windows, Dictation is installed using Ease of Access, then Speech. Then press Win plus H whenever you want to dictate text. The program you're working in just froze, and it's not responding to anything. You're clicking, crying, cursing, nada. There are a few ways to fix this problem. One of them is to use Control plus Shift plus Escape. This will bring up the Task Manager window. Now you can select the program, causing all that fuss, and press End Task. If you're on a Mac, then try Command plus Alt plus Escape. Open one app that you need for your work and press the Windows key plus left arrow. Then open another app and click the Windows key plus right arrow. Now, two windows are sharing your screen. Checking facts in your academic work while looking directly at your sources? No problem. Photoshopping while watching bright side videos? Easy peasy. The Windows key combined with the plus or minus key will open the Magnifier app, which allows you to zoom in and out wherever you point your cursor. The same goes for Mac OS, but you need to use the combination of Alt, Command, and plus to zoom. Set up Bluetooth, connect with devices in your network, use your PC as a Wi-Fi hotspot, turn notifications on and off. Those and many other functions in newer versions of Windows are available in one place called Action Center. 
to open it, simultaneously press the Windows key plus A. For Mac users, your notification center is always a click away in the top right hand corner. If you're proofreading a long text, it can take quite a bit of time because your backspace deletes letters but not whole words. Well, there's a way to delete a text word by word. Just press Ctrl and Backspace if you're on Windows. As for Mac OS, it'll be Command plus Backspace. If you're desperate to find some information online, but you don't want open separate tabs for each keyword, then just type both of them in with OR written between them. For example, type Dictionary or Translate into Google Search. Just make sure to put OR in all caps. If you're super busy looking for some information online, and then you accidentally close one of those really important tabs, pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus T will save you. If you're on a Mac, then the shortcut is Command plus Shift plus T. If you want to visit some website but don't feel like sharing your IP address, then just go to Google Translate, choose any language other than English, and type in the left window the URL address you're aiming for. After that, click on the link that appears in the Translation in the right window. There are many ways to take a screenshot, but Mac OS developers have added a screen recording function, recording a selected area editing a thumbnail and setting a timer for the screenshot. All these functions open when you press Command plus Shift plus 5. Imagine you're in the middle of some work project or research you've been doing all day when you need to deal with another task immediately. Opening new tabs and windows will just slow you down and mess up your workflow, so you need a new clean desktop. Well, just press the Windows key plus Control plus D or Control plus up if you use a Mac. It'll switch to a new, fresh desktop, and you're ready to go. Now, to get it all back, push the Windows key plus Control or the Control key on a Mac. Now you can switch between all the virtual desktops you've made by using the left and right arrow keys. When you're done with the second task, and sure that you no longer need that desktop, you can close it by pressing the Windows key plus Control plus F4. On a Mac, hold down the Option key and click on the X signs that appear over any opened desktop spaces to close them. You probably don't use the Win button on your Windows PC very often. By itself, its only function is to open the main menu, but in combination with other keys, it's quite useful. Win plus M, D, minimizes all windows, opens the desktop. Win plus E, allows you to open the Explorer quickly. By pressing Win plus R, the Run window opens, where you can open any program, file, folder, or web page. Win plus L allows you to lock the desktop quickly, useful only if you have an account password. The Mac OS developers have added a very cool feature called Smart Folders. These folders are kind of a special file filter that helps you work quickly and efficiently. Suppose you create a huge project related to astronomy. You have scattered files, documents, photos, and tables associated with the project all over the computer. The Smart Folder can help you collect all these documents in a couple of clicks in one place. In the Finder window, press the keys Command plus Option plus N. Then enter the search criteria. For example, files named stars or photographs made over a specific period of time. Mac OS provides a huge number of filters. The Smart Folder collects all these files in one place. This way, you can filter downloads, documents, photos, music, anything. On Mac OS, such a unique key is Command, and here are some cool combinations with it. Command plus up or down. Instantly scroll up and down any web page. Command plus 1, 2 or 3. Use these keys to conveniently switch between any open tabs in your browser. Command plus 1 will take you to the first tab. Command plus 2 will take you to the second, etc. Command plus H. Quickly hide all open windows from the currently active app. Command plus Shift plus T. Instantly open the last closed tab in your browser. 
The fastest way to block access to your MacBook is to press Command plus Control plus Q. Have you ever wondered why phone charging cords seem so short? iPhone cables are usually about 3 feet long. Other companies make cords up to 5 feet, while some aftermarket cables can be 6.5 feet long. There are many reasons for this. One is that nobody wants to waste time untangling a 6-foot cable in their bag. Also, producing 3 to 4 different cable lengths would be impractical for companies. Shorter cables charge your phone faster. That's because there's less resistance in them and less voltage drop. With long cables, your phone will charge slowly because some of the energy is also wasted inside the cord as heat. It also seems like phones have stopped getting bigger, yet the number of cameras inside has increased. Multiple cameras are a luxury feature on more expensive phones. Each phone has a different purpose. A low-aperture, wide-angle lens is great for capturing detailed close-ups, but not ideal for snapping things in motion. That's where a longer lens comes in. They make images look bigger from far away and allow less light through. With other camera pairs, one might take colored images, while the other snaps a monochrome pic. The result is a photo that combines color information from one lens and sharp details from the other. Additional lenses can help you snap photos from a different perspective, even if you're standing in the same spot. While scrolling through your phone, you might notice that your battery has swelled up. Most portable electronics have lithium-ion batteries, and this design is more reactive than others. Because it has fewer partitions between the cells, the entire thing is pressurized. Now, when these batteries overheat, become overcharged, or just get old, the inner cells can outgas a flammable electrolyte mixture. They're designed to contain the outgassing to prevent a fire. If the swelling is minor, the back of your phone might seem a bit weird, or there might be an unusual gap in the frame. In more severe cases, the swelling might rip the electronics open. If you notice that your battery is swollen, stop using your device and definitely don't charge it. Gently remove the battery without compressing it. Then insulate the metal parts of the battery with some electrical tape and take it to a disposal facility. If it's inside your phone and you can't get rid of it yourself, take it to a specialist shop. While you're watching Brightside videos, <laughs> you might notice that your phone screen comes on for no reason. This feature is designed to show you notifications on your phone when you pick it up or get a message. But it isn't perfect. Sometimes it will sense movement in your pocket, which can result in pocket dialing or accidentally tapping on the display. With Android phones, this feature is called the ambient display, and the iPhone's equivalent is the raise to wake. It uses the phone's accelerometer to detect when you lift up your gadget, showing you notifications without you having to push any buttons. Some people might find it too distracting, though. Thankfully, it can be turned off through your settings. You're using your phone and you're just about to click on something on a website when you see a pop-up telling you that you've won a $1,000 gift card. Hooray! But why are you seeing it and what happens when you click on it? The problem isn't with your phone nor your browser. It's with the website. The page you were looking at has a code in it, and that's what took you to a website with a shady message. This is a result of bad advertising. On most websites, ad networks load a bunch of ads that you see, and most of them compete for your attention. But some bad ads can make it into the network, and they only show up for certain people, which makes it harder for the website owners to spot. Web pages usually block specific ads, and ad networks will remove them. But most of the time, this will be after they're discovered. So here's what happens when you click on one of them. The message reads, You've just won a $1,000 gift card. Click here to redeem your prize. When you proceed, it says you must answer three questions. Then the questions multiply, and you end up completing a 10-minute survey. In the meantime, you get asked for your details to confirm your address, name, date of birth, and phone number. In the end, you might spend half an hour completing the task without ever getting to that gift card, and you also reveal your details to someone that will use them later on. Which reminds me, have you ever received a call from your own phone number? This can happen for three reasons. The most common one is that a telemarketer is spoofing the caller ID. 
When they call you, you see your own number because theirs is hidden. It's weird, but these calls rely on the fact that you'll be wondering who's on the line to make you pick up. Another explanation is that the caller's phone number might be blacklisted and yours isn't. It's another way to get you to pick up. This kind of caller might also use a phone number that's identical to yours, except for one or two digits. At other times, it could just be a bug. With iPhones, Siri can place a call to your phone. But in any case, it's better not to answer it. It's highly unlikely to be yourself from the future. When you install an app, one of the first thing it asks for is access to your location. A report in the New York Times found that apps with access to your location collect a lot of data from you. They then use this data to make money from targeted ads. But before you go turning off your location on all your apps, here are the ones that need it. Weather apps, maps, health and fitness apps, social media if you're checking into places, smart home apps, your camera to add your location data to your photos, some games, like the one where you drive to a parking lot to collect a virtual creature. Which brings me to the next point. You've just mentioned to your neighbor that you're going to buy cat food. A few minutes later, you go on social media and a bunch of cat food ads show up. You can't help but wonder why your phone is spying on you. Well, as much as 17,000 of the most popular apps record what is going on through your phone. Though, don't worry, nobody's listening out for your secrets. Algorithms and artificial intelligence are just trying to send out ads to you that match what you like. On your smartphone, there's one trigger phrase for talking to Siri, and that's, Hey Siri! But with websites, there are thousands of trigger words that make them collect data when you talk about things you want and places you want to go. But the real head-scratcher is the pricing of phones. Their price tags seem to skyrocket. There are a few reasons for this. One is that phones are getting harder to sell. Many people hold on to their smartphones for longer because they work so well. That's left smartphone makers with two options – either sell more phones or increase their prices. But extra features play a role too. Large screens, multiple cameras, and face recognition software make them more expensive to build. One study found that tech companies are now struggling to sell phones. And in 2019, they shifted to making less expensive models to appeal to people with different budgets. Me? Well, I'm waiting for the phony baloney phone to come out. Instead of spying on you, it just flatters you all day with stuff about yourself you really want to hear. You know, when smartphones first appeared, they were really bulky and expensive. These early phones consumed lots of power, so they needed really big batteries to run. Plus, electronics components were also pretty large in those days. Besides their brick-like bodies, they also had long external antennas to reach the cell network. But as time passed, electronic parts became smaller and battery capacity increased enormously. Internal antennas appeared, and phones became thin and light as the overall technology improved. A three and a half inch screen seemed okay to most people, ooh, and we thought it would stay that size forever. But nowadays, it's hard to find a smartphone that has a screen smaller than five and a half inches. Modern smartphones just keep getting bigger. So why are we now using smartphones that resemble tablets? if we already know the ways to make them smaller. Well, one reason is the camera. Today's smartphones are able to film professional-looking movies thanks to their high-resolution cameras. To get this picture quality, you need bigger sensors. The number of cameras in a device also affects the size of the smartphone, because multiple cameras require more powerful processors and consume more energy. On the subject of processors, Modern smartphones are over a million times more powerful than the guidance computers used to send astronauts to the moon in 1969. Processors create a lot of heat when they work. Since a cooling fan won't fit inside a smartphone, manufacturers make their devices bigger. This helps to get rid of the heat faster in powerful modern phones. The heat problem is also one of the reasons why metal is often used instead of plastic to make those smartphones. High-resolution videos, games, virtual reality, and many other features of today's smartphones need a fast internet connection. To achieve this, manufacturers add more powerful antennas to their phones, which also makes them bigger. 
Now, you might think that your smartphone adds a lot to your electricity bill because you have to charge it every night. But relax, your smartphone actually consumes a small amount of power. It costs under a dollar a year to charge your phone every day. Your smartphone has a hidden FM radio inside it, but it's switched off when you buy it. Manufacturers don't activate smartphone radios because demand for this feature is too low. But you can unlock the FM tuner all by yourself. All you need is a special app and a pair of wired headphones to serve as the antenna. Cool! There's a secret way to increase the lifespan of your smartphone battery. Just avoid fully discharging or charging your device. You should connect your phone when you hit 30-40% to power and unplug it at about 80-90%. to Don't go all the way to 100. This is better for the battery. The first man in history to make a phone call using a cell phone was Martin Cooper, a Motorola engineer. In 1973, he presented the device at a press conference in New York. To prove to the public that it really worked, Cooper made a call there and then. He had a good sense of humor, so he called one of his biggest rivals, engineer Joel Ingle of AT&T. The first words ever spoken using a cell phone were, Joel, this is Marty. I'm calling you from a cell phone, a real handheld portable cell phone. Neener, neener, neener. No, actually, I just added that. Do you get stressed without your phone or when you've run out of battery? You might have nomophobia, which means no mobile phone phobia. People with nomophobia are afraid of going anywhere without their cell phones. Don't worry, there's treatment for that. Modern phones can cost quite a lot, sometimes even more than a laptop. But this phone is unbelievably expensive. With a price of more than $40 million, the Falcon Supernova iPhone comes with a case made of gold and a diamond on its back. Does the name Bluetooth sound strange to you? The name comes from the Danish and Norwegian king, Harald Blotten, wrongly translated into English as Harald Bluetooth. And no, he didn't have blue teeth. He was known for his success in unifying several Nordic tribes under his rule. The inventor thought it was a good name for a technology that unifies different gadgets. Now, there's a cell phone actually orbiting the Earth. Several years ago, some British researchers decided to test phone technology against the harsh conditions of outer space. They launched a Google Nexus phone on a rocket. And it's still out there somewhere. Every smartphone today is equipped with a selfie camera. But what if you want to take a selfie with a whole group of friends and your hands just aren't long enough to fit everyone into the picture? Don't worry! If you still have wired headphones, you can snap a photo simply by pressing the volume button. The cameras on our smartphones don't just film and take photos in visible light. They're actually so sensitive that they can see infrared. You can try this at home. Grab your TV remote, point the camera at it, and press any button. Your eyes won't see anything, but your phone screen will reveal a blinking light. We all know that smartphones can read QR codes, but they can also read barcodes with a special app. So if you're at the store and can't find the price on something, try your smartphone. Use this trick if you want to turn your smartphone into a microscope. If you attach the lens from a laser pointer to the camera of your phone, you'll be able to see images that are magnified 100 times. You can also record them to get high-resolution pictures. Studies show that there are around 17,000 bacteria on our phone. That's 10 times more than on most toilet seats. So think twice before you use it at the dinner table. 90% of all phones in Japan are waterproof. Japanese users even take their gadgets into the shower. The first waterproof phone was released in 2005. And since then, more manufacturers have adapted their devices to suit this unusual habit. In China, more people now use the internet through their cell phones or tablets than through PCs. 
because smartphones are usually cheaper and can perform the same tasks as a computer, it's often more practical to use a mobile device. There are so many useful tips out there today that make our lives easier. About half of all of our time on digital media is spent using them. But studies show that we very rarely try out new apps. The majority of users in the US down zero apps per month. The GPS service on your phone doesn't need an internet connection or a data plan to operate. The system is made up of 24 satellites orbiting the Earth every 12 hours. Our phones can receive a GPS signal at almost any point on the planet for free. The first person to predict the use of cell phones was the inventor and engineer Nikola Tesla way back in 1909. In a column in the New York Times, he wrote that people would one day carry an inexpensive instrument to hear and speak from anywhere on sea and land. There's more gold inside a ton of cell phones than in a ton of gold ore. So recycling old phones doesn't just help the environment, it can also make us rich. Hey, all good stuff! It's the latest news in tech! Foldable phones coming soon! The future is here! And all I can think is, sheesh, I had a foldable phone back in the early 2000s. Yeah, the thing folded in half and flipped open with a flick of your thumb. Wait, are we going back in time? The familiar old flip phones, for anyone not old enough to remember, usually had a screen on one side and a keypad on the other, connected by a small hinge. The clamshell design, ah, takes me back. But nowadays, we need bigger and bigger screens. We're now working and studying from our phones, watching movies and shows, multitasking with split-screen features, watching a YouTube video on one side, chat on social media on the other. So no, the future will be nothing like the past. It'll be all about a big, long, bendable screen. Just picture it. You're watching a video on your phone as you do the dishes or watch the dog. You come into the living room, sit on the sofa, but no need to switch to TV. You can just unfold your phone into a big tablet. But then it's time for work or school, so you just roll your phone around your wrist like a bracelet and run out the door. Or walk. That'll be a reality sooner than you think, because foldable screens already exist thanks to OLED display technology. Old devices and some modern ones use LCD displays. LCD works by laying millions of colored dots, also known as pixels, in front of a backlight. If your phone has this type and you really look into the screen, you can sometimes see them. Or you may have noticed it on old broken phones. When the backlight breaks, you can still see the picture, but it's barely visible. But when the pixels break, all you get is a big pile of nothingness on your phone but the backlight still shines. These fancy organic light-emitting diode displays, or OLED, also have millions of colored pixels. But they're tiny, so even if you try with all your might to see them on your new laptop or phone screen, you won't be able to. And with these ones, every dot makes its own light. This technology is more battery-consuming, but it creates a much better, more vivid color. Save space, too, since there's no need for a backlight. And when printed on a thin layer of plastic, you can do a lot of cool things. You can shape it or, you guessed it, bend it. OLED displays have been used in a lot of products you might even have in your house right now. It allows the newest monitors and TVs to have a curved shape, and some of the latest smartphones have bent screens. So why don't we have foldable phones available to us already? Well, the first problem manufacturers face is how to make a foldable screen that's consumer-friendly. We've got used to having durable but very unbendable glass-protected touchscreens on most of our smartphones and tablets. With foldable displays made out of plastics, people will be touching the screen itself to interact with it, not the glass protecting the touchscreen. Remember early gadgets with plastic screens? Yeah, they get all scratched up after constant usage and being stuck in our pockets. Now imagine what would happen to your smartphone screen if it was made out of plastic. And good luck finding a bendable screen protector. But even if we can figure out how to bend the screen, smartphones have other components. 
As you can imagine, batteries and chips aren't very bendable. Power supplies and lithium-ion batteries can even catch on fire if flexed too much. Almost everything in the modern phone is made from aluminum and plastic that, yes, can be bent, but eventually will snap and break apart. So, just to make the phone physically bendable, the whole manufacturing process has to be revolutionized. Every small detail, from the screen and battery to the case and outer protection, has to be redesigned. As well as revolutionizing the materials, smartphone manufacturers will have to redesign some of the components. Large OLED screens or more than one display will need so much more energy than modern smartphone batteries can create. Battery capacity is advancing with every passing year, but it's still not enough. I'm already running out of juice after watching just a few YouTube videos. Just imagine having to recharge your foldable phone every 4-5 to five hours. Hardware aside, the software will also have to be almost entirely redone. Current operating systems like iOS or Android are made to work on either a smartphone or a tablet. But for a foldable smartphone, the system will have to be able to do both and quickly switch between phone and tablet mode. All the apps and the operating system will have to adapt to the changing screen size. That also means a lot more processing power. Right now, the best solution seems to be the Android OS, since it's already been made to work on many devices with a variety of sizes. But this isn't only a problem for the operating system, but for app developers as well. For example, streaming services like Netflix will have to figure out how to stretch or resize videos for every screen size. And it's not the same as putting your phone vertically or horizontally. With a foldable phone, you'll be able to customize the size of the screen as you like, with infinite possibilities. Sounds cool, but it's a lot of work changing everything to fit that. And the main problem of why we don't see many consumer-ready foldable phones on the market already is the price of manufacturing. Just imagine how much companies will have to change their production process. If every single part of the phone has to be changed, well, that means completely new materials, methods, machines. Woo! That can explain why most tech companies aren't jumping headfirst into the mass production of foldable phones. But with more progress every day, it'll eventually become cheaper to produce them. So will we ever see foldable phones? Sure, you can already buy them. Not exactly the futuristic bracelet kind, but there are simple clamshell foldable devices. It's almost exactly like those old flip phones, but both panels are screens with bright displays. The only problem is the hinge. To protect the phone and make it more durable, hinges were made too strong, so you can't exactly open it with the flick of a finger. And after a mechanical test, even these durable hinges broke after 27,000 openings. For an everyday item, that's not a lot. Some other new devices recently presented to the public look more like a glimpse into the future. A long tablet-like display that can be folded into the size of a regular smartphone. Sadly, the newest designs are still clanky and sometimes too thick, making them less interesting for a regular user. Plus, most of the modern foldable phones have one big glaring flaw – a crease in the middle where the screen folds. Not a big problem, but it's not very enjoyable compared to the seamless large screens of regular modern smartphones. In addition to all these mechanical problems, there's the issue of cost. Most of these currently available foldable phones start at $1,000 and can go as high as $3,000. Mm, that's not a price most phone users are ready to pay. Despite the problems I've mentioned, the design and production of new foldable phones is still going on. There was a tech demo that presented a new design for a phone, one that actually wraps around a person's wrist like a bracelet or watch. And Apple has recently gotten a patent for a phone that can roll up like a scroll. Some people say the future is in foldable laptop laptops, not smartphones. The ability to watch a movie and then roll your laptop up into a thin tube that hardly takes up any space in your bag? Huh, just take my money already. I'm in. The year is 2160. The place? The Pacific Ocean, off the coast of Japan. The ocean seems calm. At least, the surface does. The ocean floor is cracking right now. Boom! 
the Earth opens up, magma shoots out. The crack in the ocean floor triggers an earthquake, and a massive amount of energy shoots into the ocean. And now for gravity to get involved. It pulls the water down and makes it move faster and faster. It's a tsunami. A wave as high as a skyscraper plows toward Tokyo at 500 miles per hour. That's millions of tons of water. It would be awesome to take a picture of it, but there's no time to admire the power of nature. The tsunami's about to hit Tokyo Bay. The tsunami smashes ashore and starts attacking the largest structure on the planet, the Tokyo Pyramid Metropolis. It's 6,600 feet tall. That's five times the height of the Empire State Building. Imagine if the entire population of Denver, Colorado lived and worked in one building. The Tokyo Pyramid Metropolis, TPM, can handle 750,000 people at a time. Incredibly, the structure withstands the impact, and most of the tsunami's energy seems to have just disappeared. This time, engineering stands up to nature. TPM was built by the Shimizu Corporation, which was founded in 1804. The pyramid is the most stable structure around. If you don't believe me, go to Egypt and see the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's lasted 4,500 years, and it's still going strong. The TPM is built on water and consists of 204 individual pyramids. They look like bunches of grapes stacked on top of each other, eight tiers in all. Only in this case, each grape is the size of a Vegas casino. The TPM's actually hollow. That's how it defends itself against typhoons and tsunamis. It doesn't meet the wind and waves head-on, but lets all that energy just pass right through it. Robots and autonomous control systems run this place. It runs on solar, wind, and wave energy. The pyramids are connected by passages, all in all about 85 miles worth. They connect everything and are maintained by AI that always finds you the fastest way to get from Pyramid A to Pyramid B. The TPA is obviously the city of the future, but human tech isn't quite ready for it just yet. Originally, engineers decided to install the pyramid on 36 columns, all dug into the ocean bed. If you build a pyramid that size out of steel and concrete, you'd be looking at 50 million tons of load press in on itself. The TPM would have collapsed under its own weight and imploded into the ocean. They needed something a thousand times lighter than concrete and stronger than steel. So what's this futuristic material? Look at this old guy. It's the first car on the planet with an internal combustion engine. It hit the road in 1885. And this is the first artificial satellite that humans launched into space. It only took an evolutionary blip to go from the first horseless carriage to our first flight into space. That TPM's not looking so ridiculous. Hey, we can do anything. The solution is carbon, and it's everywhere. It's the rod in your pencil and the diamond in your crown or ring or industrial drill. But we don't just need ordinary carbon, we need graphene. It's a type of carbon we can make nanotubes out of. They're thinner than a human hair, but 400 times stronger than steel. And most importantly, they're light. Nanotubes aren't affected by chemicals, oxygen, or water. Perfect for the TPM. That's just a fancy way of saying the thing's not gonna rust. Shimizu has plans for a power station on the moon an underwater city, transforming the Sahara Desert into a huge oasis, and much more. But they aren't the only ones changing the planet. The Netherlands is the size of two New Jerseys, and about 30% of it is below sea level. To protect their country from water, the Dutch build dams, lots of them. But that's just defense. In 1986, they decided to go on offense and take back some of the land from the sea. The first dam was 19 miles long. It basically turned a bay into a lake. The second dam sealed the deal. After 42 years of work, the Netherlands got itself a whole new province, larger than Los Angeles. Humans have done the same thing all over the world, like in Hong Kong, the Philippines, Italy. Hey, take that, water! What about building stuff on land that's already land? Before NASA's missions to Mars, 
The most expensive project in history was the construction of the interstate highway system in the United States. It took about 35 years to finish. In today's money, it cost about $530 billion. All that cash bought 46,000 miles of road. That's almost two times around the globe. There are over 270 million vehicles in the US, more than Japan, Brazil, India, and Germany combined. But in terms of sheer effort, the roads of Rome were way more impressive. Over 2,000 years before the first automobile, the Romans built a huge network of roads 50,000 miles long. They connected Ireland with Egypt and Turkey with Spain. The roads were pretty safe, and travelers could stay in hotels, dine in cafes, or mail a letter at the nearest post office. Only about 30% of the Earth's surface is land. The world's oceans, rivers, and lakes are full of life, and it seemed like a ridiculous task to catalog everything living in there. But 2,700 scientists from 80 countries decided to team up to do it. The cost? $650 million. Those scientists spent 10 years searching for old and new species. It was one of the biggest science projects ever attempted. They even discovered about 6,000 new species of fish, squid, and algae. The Great Wall of China is huge. 13,000 miles of walls, natural barriers, and trenches. That's about two times the distance from Alaska to Australia. They built it over a period of 2,000 years, with no trucks, bulldozers, electricity. Just raw people power. Modern China is not exactly dropping the ball. In two years, China used more concrete for construction than the US ever did. I mean ever. Roads, cities, airports, everything there is huge. The Three Gorges Dam is definitely the new Great Wall of China. Over 7,600 feet long and 600 feet high. You're looking at three times more concrete and steel than the Hoover Dam. It's the largest concrete structure in the world and cost about $37 billion. More than a million people had to pack up and move to make way for it. Switzerland has the longest and deepest railway tunnel on the planet. Under the snowy Alps, builders dug 35 miles of tunnels. Every day, 200 freight and passenger trains pass through it. The amount of rock they took out to make the tunnel is about the same as five Great Pyramids. The whole thing cost about $12 billion. Egypt's one of the oldest nations on the planet. But now, they're building one of the newest cities. It's going to be about the size of Singapore and filled with 6 million lucky people. There's going to be apartments, government buildings, entertainment, even an opera house. Oh, and a park that'll make Central Park look like someone's backyard. When it's finished, it'll be Egypt's new capital. So why bother? Well, by 2050, Cairo's going to have about 40 million people in it. Looks like they'll need more than one new city. The first flights to the moon cost about $280 billion in today's money. But SpaceX isn't letting price get in its way. The company plans to build a colony on Mars with a population of 1 million by 2050. They claim that once the program starts, you'll be able to buy a ticket to Mars for as little as $100,000. But the biggest science project ever is definitely the International Space Station. It weighs as much as two Boeing 747s and zooms through space at the speed of 17,500 miles per hour. That pencils out to be 5 miles per second. The station orbits the Earth 16 times per day, and it doesn't come cheap. Luckily, a whole bunch of countries share the bill. But it's definitely the most expensive room service anywhere in the galaxy. It costs $10,000 to deliver a bottle of water from Earth to the space station. Hey, at that price, I think it's important to ask, sparkling or still? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click